Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our Elliot Wave part one uh, webinar. A bit more tricky webinar this time, a bit more, um, not tricky actually, a bit more intermediate level one. Uh, there are not a lot of uh, people that actually uh, um, that are actually, um, how can I say that, using often the Elliott wave analysis, but um, the big ones definitely do. The, 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 um, the big, big traders, uh, like um, institutional ones, definitely um, taking into consideration the Elliott wave analysis is one of the, uh, of the, um, that is used uh, in the long term as well. So that's why it, it is widely used, especially from the big players. So, um, if you're facing any audio or visual issues, just stick it in the box, let me know. Uh, this is not a beginner's, it's more of intermediate to advance, my dear loop. Uh, um, yeah, it might be too advanced for a beginner. It depends how long you're trading. When did you start it? Are you familiar with... Uh, um, actually, just let me know how long you're trading or if you have not started yet. Okay, one, one and a half year. Okay, so it's not that bad, my dear. So you, if if you were consistently like into the trading uh, sector for one and a half year, it might be not that bad. But um, okay, if you if you feel that you you don't un you start if you feel that as long as I, mean, I will start presenting, right? So if you feel at any point that is too much, you're getting confused or uh, etc., it's better to drop it for now, okay? But wait a bit, uh, wait a bit, because uh, I will try to uh, explain as um, uh, si uh, with, the, with the simplest way possible. So this is our email address, as usual, okay? Webinars at hotprox.com. Feel free to send me and ask me anything you want. And before we start officially, I have to go through the disclaimer warning as usual. So, <clears throat> this material is provided for general marketing communication for informational purposes only and does not constitute an independent investment research. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as containing an investment advice or an investment recommendation or a solicitation for a for the purpose of buying or uh, or selling of any financial instrument. All information provided is gathered from reputable sources and any information containing an indication of past performance is not a guarantee or reliable indicator of future performance. Users acknowledge that any investment in leveraged products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which the users are solely, solely responsible and liable. We assume no liability for any loss arising from any investment made based on the information provided in this communication. This, this communication must not be reproduced or further distributed without our prior written permission. Risk warning, trading leveraged products such as Forex and derivatives may not be suitable for all investors as they carry a high degree of risk to your capital. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks involved, take into account your investment objectives and level of experience before trading, and if necessary, seek independent advice. You can find the risk uh, disclosure, the full risk disclosure document on our website. Feel free to check all the legal documentations um, if you are interested in and uh, the, everything, we have everything on the website, so feel free to visit the, uh, 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 the legal documentation. So this is me, let's skip that and let's official start our webinar by watching together what we're going to cover today. Elliot, so Elliot Waves obviously took over this is the name uh, from his its creator, Ralph Nelson Elliot, right? Um, not the. Um, um, it's 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 it, it. It might be one of the few things, one of the few indicators that they have initially. 
how can I say that? Um, that it was, it was, it might be one of the few things that have been created over the year precisely initially for markets. Like, you know, for example, uh, other uh, other uh, indicators, uh, actually the most of the indicators have been derived from either by mathematicians and formulas that are used uh, wider, in a wider background, like um, uh, for physics, for uh, medicine, for, uh, but we didn't really have something that it was creative, created, it, uh, I mean, specific for market trends, for, for, for the markets. It's one of these rare times that we have seen something created precisely for studying and for um, analyzing the markets. Because all the other indicators, <clears throat> Fibonacci, Fibonacci is, 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 is the father of maths. He didn't create it at the Fibonacci uh, for the stock markets. Eventually, we have found that Fibonacci works perfectly for stock markets as well, but Fibonacci has been used in uh, physics, in medicine, in uh, ev everywhere, actually, everywhere, the Fibonacci uh, theory. But yeah, it's one of these few uh, rare times in which uh, uh, this guy named Ralph Nelson Elliott has managed to create something specifically for analyzing market trends. So, uh, let's move on. <clears throat> so we're going to see together some, just a bit of a background, some basic rules. So the, the reason why I um, uh, mentioned to you DR loop or Kyang, I don't know what, how you want me to call you, but the reason why I, call, I taught you to stay is because it's a very, very structural uh, topic. If you follow the rules of Elliott Wave, you can easily learn how to read them. So it might be an intermediate to advanced level webinar, but because there are some rules, pretty clear steps, it might not be that difficult to follow. So. So we're going to see the, the rules, we're going to see in practice how you can read the Elliott waves, improve the audio, struggling to hear from here. Oh, that's bizarre. Are you sure? Are you sure it's not your end? Because I don't have anyone else complaining. Maybe it's, it's your end, my dear Jamil, or Rasak, sorry. Are you sure it's not your end? Um, guys, if you're facing the same issue with Rasak, let me know. Sounds fine, my side. So it might be your connection, Rasak. Okay, I'm sorry. So we're going to see how to read the Elliott waves and what kind of signals, actually, not what kind of signals, actually, when they are um, presenting a breakout and when they could present reversals. Okay, here we are. So, oops, okay, perfect. So, Ralph Nelson Elliott, a humble accountant, but not just a random accountant, he was an accountant in one of the biggest railroad companies in the world, but he literally spent his whole life, he spent 20 years studying stock markets. So in 1930, Mr. Elliot, be, it was it was really really support. He was a supporter that markets are not random and are not chaotic. That's actually true. So he discovered and proved that stock markets trend and reverse in recognizable pattern. Okay. Because up to 1930, uh, people believed that markets are random, are behaving like without any, based on the house, they, they, they don't follow um, anything. But that was wrong, it was a wrong belief. So he discovered and managed to prove that stock markets, markets in general, financial markets, 
trend and reverse in a pattern in a recognizable pattern more precisely so he found that financial markets have moved have they have some characteristics movement characteristics that repeat over and over again what i mean we are seeing the markets um, repeating themselves we are seeing them uh, doing some shapes like head and shoulders formation or cup and handle formation or um, they are moving in a triangle up triangle down triangle they are moving so but we are we can spot this pattern through the years several times in a presa in a particular asset right so they are moving they are trending in some particular patterns recognizable patterns again and again and again I don't, i'm not saying that for example i have i don't know i have over here um uh i have uh, like this this uh, m shape which is actually a pattern um uh, a crop pattern to be it was a, 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 um, sorry an M, M shape I don't say that okay euro dollar next um for the next uh, like oops so f in February and even in March it will do another M shape as well I'm not saying that we'll see the same pattern again and again but in the past we will we have definitely see euro dollar doing another similar pattern another similar m pattern so it's repeating itself okay it's doing there are some precise patterns uh, that the market is following and we might see it several times over the years so uh, so based on this principle elliot called these movements waves so he described how these patterns link to get linked together to form a larger version of themselves how they turn link to form the same pattern at the next large size uh, producing a structured progression so what i mean by, by that if we have seen for example this m wave this m shape from euro dollar in the daily chart at some point, we might shift to the 15 minutes chart and see another M shape. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that the patterns will be formed um, in a particular time frame. We might see these patterns. There are a, a, a lot of candlestick patterns, right? We have crab pattern, we have um, to the top, to the bottom, head and shoulder formation, inverse head and shoulder formation, hand and cup, a cup, a cup and handle. Uh, we have a red uh, um, black white shoulders. We have black rows. We have so many patterns. But these patterns are 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 patterns that we're gonna see in every single um, uh, time scale. Okay. So now, so that that was his that was what he discovered and what he wanted to approve he to to prove sorry to prove so he 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 uh, was uh, he actually discovered that the markets are not random they actually trend and reverse in recognizable patterns okay. Which he called them, called them waves, and he was really keen to prove that um, uh, um, that um, uh, that market repeats itself itself again and again in every single time frame. So. <clears throat> So his principle, the so-called Elliott wave principle, according to Elliott, is a cycle 
in which the market generally trades. So according to Elliot, the market trade trades in waves, right? So either to the upside, either to the downside. So according to Elliot, the market is traded in waves. These waves are a result of repetitive circles. So what is very interesting about Elliot logic is that he took into consideration that the markets are not acting just on the technical analysis, but he took into consideration into account the emotional perception of investors. So basically Elliot watched the outside market influences. He understood because he was a trader himself. He understood that what is responsible for the market's move and why markets repeat itself. So what is responsible for this is the psychology of the investor. And more precisely, he understood very, very clearly that the psychology of the mass investors is responsible for, uh, is, is what is mainly influence, affects the markets. Therefore, whereas so far we have always based on one analysis on how markets react on the technical side, he was the one that gave more importance to the emotional reactive of the market. Okay, because he was one of the few analysts, one of the few um, uh, um, uh, yeah, analyst, economist, whatever you want to call it, was one of the few that understood how important the psychology of the mass is and how, how it affects the markets. It was one of the few that created a tool that captures also the emotion. Because, you know, if we're in a fear, like now, right? The last few weeks, uh, markets are in a fear because of Russia and Ukraine tension. Also, they are in a they, they are um, uh, okay. They are in a fear due to that. So they are actually shifting to the safe assets. So this is emotions, emotions into trading, psychology, uh, psychology of the mass, the psychology of the mass right now. The mass investors are in a cautious mode, so turning their attention, investing to safe havens like gold uh, until these politics are over. So yeah, so um, yeah, it was the one of the few person that actually created something that was not solely uh, included technical analysis in, but also used to uh, con included in the psychology of the investor. So Elliott Wave principle is a form of technical analysis, which is used to analyze market trends, locate extremes in investor psychology, and to forecast future market trends. Okay. How he managed to do that? First of all, let's focus on the market trends over here. Okay. Market is moving up, is moving down, is moving sideways, right? It has a certain direction. At some point it might be up, at some other point it might be down, at some other point it might go sideways because there is a lack of direction. That's why if we have a clear, from technical perspective, a, a clear directional move, then we say that we have a trend. If it's moving up, we have an uptrend. If it's moving down, we have a downtrend, right? So trends have a beginning and an end, right? But at, at every end, there is a new beginning. What do we mean? If an uptrend has reached its end, that means that a, that a new trend will uh, begin and downtrend. So at every end, there is a new beginning. So that's in regards to the market trends. Now, investor psychology, 
Elliot knew that at the beginning of each trend, there are just few participants, right? At the, when the, no one of us can really spot the beginning of a trend, the very, very, very beginning of the trend, right? It's very difficult, very, very difficult, but that's why at the beginning of each trend, because we're not really sure that there is a trend actually, because it's a very, very beginning, there are just few participants, few investors. But as the trend develops, so as soon as people start noticing that, oh, I might have a trend over here, it looks that it's going up, I'm, we might have an uptrend. So as trend develops, more and more traders are joining, right? So if you notice that, oh, this looks to be an uptrend, you want to join. So more and more buyers will enter. So as trend continues, more and more people want to join, want to jump in. But as soon as people start, uh, traders start fearing that it might reach to an overbought territory or it might reach into its end, and as soon as actually everyone has joined this trend, so there are not other market participants, everyone is on the, let's say, buying side of the trend. So everyone has already opened positions and joined the trend. Then there are no sellers and, uh, no, and there are no um, sellers anymore, right? Because everyone has jumped into the uptrend. Everyone has uh, joined the trend. So at the end, everyone has joined and there is no one that can support it anymore. So this is when the trend is ending, when everyone has joined, okay? There are no other people joining. So, so uh, there is no one else to support the trend, to keep buying or keep selling depends which side of the market you are uh, so is then is when the uh, the trend is reaching to its end so people with because there will not be any volume any further any volume increase people start closing position um they are seeing that there is not a volume anymore there is not a continuous uh, the momentum is not getting stronger and stronger so they are starting closing position and that might result to the trend reversal because everyone joined the trend, right? So there is nothing to support it anymore. So people close in position and then we might see the end of the trend and the reverse of the trend to be more precise. This is what Elliot knew, understood the psychology. He knew that, oh, uh, that people are getting excited when they discover a trend, they are getting excited and they jump in but then they lose their excitement because they're seeing that, oh, it's not moving anymore to the upside. So apparently it's, it's just, there is not enough support anymore and they are starting closing position. So that will result uh, to a trend reversal. So he understood this psychology and that's why he managed to create this principle. So here it is markets moving in waves. So Elliot describes any upwards or downwards swings that we might see in the market as waves. So he called these waves, waves. So they, these waves, according to him, represent the mass psychology, the people's psychology. But far more interesting is that even though uh, the, the analogy is based on emotions, there was still a collective pattern. So even though he said that and he, 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 he states that everything that we are seeing, all these moves that we are seeing is the psychology of the traders, okay, it's the psychology of the, but 
even though this looks to be the, this boost and decline and boost and decline and boost and decline, all these movements that we're seeing are based on the emotions, we can see that there is a pattern, right? Can you see the pattern? So up, slightly down, up, slightly down, up, slightly down. So three waves to the up and then two waves down. Three waves up, two waves down three waves up and that was the end and now, now a new pattern started three waves down to up three waves down to up so we are seeing patterns we are seeing something repeating for uh, for a period of time okay so Elliot was able to analyze markets in a greater depth, identifying the specific characteristics of Elliot of, of, of wave patterns and making detailed market predictions based on the patterns. Also, another important quality of Elliot waves is that they are fractals. So he discovered that Elliot waves has fractal nature. So fractal, we are calling fractal anything that when we subdivide it in a smaller scale, we're going to see the same exact, the same um, pattern. So what I mean, okay, he discovered the Elliott wave principle that the market is moving to waves, okay, three up to down or three down to up and again and again and again but also he said they are waves but they have a fractal nature as well so fractals i remind you that fractals is a mathematical term is a mathematical structure which means that on an even smaller scale and if an, a smaller scale to infinitive you can see the same pattern again and again. So, so Elliot discovered this, that trading patterns, other than the other than the fact that they repeat themselves and they are structured, and we might see the same patterns again and again, they are also fractals. So they are also we can also find the same patterns in smaller or larger scales. Okay. So he then began to look at how these repeating patterns could be used as predictive indicators of future markets. So just to clarify again what I mean by fractals, like broccoli, right, over here. If you see his, its shape, its bigger shape, you can see something like triangle, right? If you zoom in, you can see smaller triangles within this triangle. If you zoom in even further, you can see that each sub-triangle of our broccoli has smaller triangles on. If you zoom in even further, you can see, so you can see the same shape again and again and again, every time that you are moving into a smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller scale, okay? Like that, like over here. Let's assume that this is a price action. In the larger scale, we have three moves up, two down, right? So if we zoom, if we divide this very first wave, one, two, and check in a smaller scale, you can see again, three up, two down. If we zoom in even further to a smaller scale, you can we can see three up, two down, three up, two down, three up, three down. So we are seeing their fractal nature simply because like in physics, every action has a reaction. If people are buying, okay, this buying might cause selling eventually. A sharp selling will cause buying. So every action is followed by a reaction. Like in physics, the same stands in financial markets. Every action creates an equal and opposite reaction. So as a price movement 
up or down must be followed by a contrary movement. In order to have buyers, we need to have sellers. In order to have sellers, we need to have buyers as well. So price action is divided into trends and corrections. So trend up, a small correction needed. Trend up, a correction needed. So buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, right? So price action is divided into trends and corrections or sideways movement. So trends show the main direction of the price, right? From one to five, we have the overall trend, which is uptrend. But we had some corrections in between, which were against the trend. And these are called corrective waves. So we have an overall trend to the upside. So the waves that they were moving along with the trend, they are called impulsive. So one, three, and five are called impulsive because they are following the overall trend. And the uh, wave two and four, they are called corrective because it was a temporary correction of the trend. So uh, they are called corrective. So simply put, movement in the direction of the trend is unfolding according to Elliot in five waves. Okay? So three impulsive ones and two corrective ones. Okay. The movement, um, so uh, yeah, three waves call like, so one, three, and five uh, are impulsive and two correctives, which are the, um, the two and the four. But once we reach to the fifth wave, then according to Elliot, we might see uh, another three corrective waves called A, B, and C. So overall, according to Elliot, Elliot we have a five to three complete circle. So five waves, in, okay, and uh, five waves which lead to the direction, to the same direction as the overall trend, and three corrective waves, sorry, which is the A and B, C. Ideally, as we can see from this diagram, when we zoom in and go into the smaller, uh, uh, to the short-term charts, to smaller time frames, we will see the same patterns. So, five, three, five, three, five, so one, two, three, four, five was completed. So what we have afterwards, we have A, B, C. So this is when the trend has ending and we have a new trend. Okay, so remember, five, three, five, A, B, C. Um now, um, okay, let's move on. So, yes, I know that it's it, your your head in my has a headache right now, right now, but we are simplifying stuff right now, okay, so if you have an uptrend, you are in a bullish market and you have noticed that your asset is following Elliott wave, so you have noticed a peak impulsive wave, a small correction, another big impulsive wave, a small correction. So then you need to wait for either the final wave and start monitoring whether the correction and the reversal will start. Because as soon as the fifth wave finish and we are seeing, start seeing an extensive decline, then we have the beginning of a downtrend. So five moves, three impulse up and two corrective waves down within the uptrend. 
thread in the direction of the impulsive wave since larger price movement occurs. A very big corrective wave, however, to the downside. So the A, it's not a tiny one, it will be a big one, and I will show you how big it should be in order to support the Elliott wave analysis. But if we have a very big corrective wave to the downside, then this could alert the end of the uptrend. So we need to start searching for an opportunity to enter short. On the flip side, we might have a bearish market. So we're going to see five moves, so five waves again, but this time the impulsive ones will go down along with the trend and the corrective ones will go up. So we have a bearish market. As soon as we see our fifth wave ending, how are we going to figure out that our fifth wave is ha, it has reached to its end and that our overall downtrend has reached to its, to its end is when we see a big corrective wave to the upside, the so-called A. And you can say, but Andrea, how can I understand whether that was a big correction or not uh, in order to realize that we're going to have a reversal or not. Now I'm going to stick, I'm going to present you the rules. This is the way, uh, if you remember these rules, you will know when it's time to jump into a trend, when it's time to close a position of that trend, when it's time to trade the reversal of that trend, and so on and so forth. So, based on the Elliott wave principle, Believe it or not, there are only three rules when it comes to interpreting and identifying Elliott waves. Okay, so of course these rules apply only to the five wave impulse sequence. Okay, there are other rules for the correction. Okay, so of so. Let's assume that our asset starts moving up, right? It's very difficult for someone to identify the beginning of the trend, as I mentioned, okay? So let's assume that we have noticed that this asset is moving up and up and up. So you start monitoring the asset. So, and you see a, a bit of a correction. So what you have to do is, first of all, measure this correction. So you're going to apply a Fibonacci level from the bottom to the, the uh, top of this first rally. Okay, and then you want to remain calm and wait to see what will happen. So you have seen that it started reversing. Okay. But if this reversal, if this second wave has not reached the beginning of wave one, so it has not retraced more than 100% of wave one, so it hasn't turned back to the low of wave one, and instead it started turning up again, okay, it means that the very first rule of Elliot has been satisfied. So, so we have a rebound. As soon as you see this rebound, this upwards movement, breaking the top, breaking the peak of first wave, sorry, okay, break. this is a buying opportunity, guys, because according to the rules, wave three, must be big one. And more precisely, you should stick on your head that wave three can never be the shortest out of the three. So we have three impulsive waves, right? One, three, and five. The third one can never be the shortest one. The shortest one might be either five or one, but the th third, can never be the shortest one. So the fact that the wave rebounded, breaking the top of wave one and extended and is larger than uh, one, 
this is a buying opportunity. And rule number four, as soon as three wave reach to its end, and we have seen a correction again, a pullback. We need to measure this pullback because wave four cannot, must never, never break below, must never move below the peak of wave one. If the wave four goes below the peak of wave one, then means this means that you don't have Elliott wave. So you won't see these five movements and then three down. If any of these rules is broken, then you don't have Elliott waves. Okay. So Uh, yeah, so, so uh, you will say, how can I, okay, how, how you can measure, actually, a, a, a key tool to be able to spot Elliott wave, to approve Elliott wave, and, and even to uh, manage to identify entry points or exit points is by using Fibonacci. That's why Fibonacci is very important in Elliott Wave. Um, okay, so assuming that the, the, the trend has begun, okay, obviously it's not easy to spot the beginning of the trend, so obviously we might see this afterwards, right? But we can measure it. We can measure it in order to find our entry points, right, guys? So what we do, as I said earlier, you need to put your very first um, Fibonacci from the bottom of, of the trend up to the first, up to the top of the very first wave. By setting it this way, you will measure the wave two and you can measure with this way the wave three as well. So you need to make sure that the second wave is not, it remains, it cannot exit low of wave one. And wave two must not be more than 85% of wave one. If it's more than 85% of wave one, then forget it we might don't have Elliott wave. So we might not see a rebound, okay? Wave three must be bigger than wave one, okay? And more precisely, it must be more than 161.8% of wave one. So by applying your Fibonacci from the bottom of one to the top of one, you're gonna have Fibonacci extensions, right? So make sure that the third wave is more than 161% um, of wave one. So how you will do that? Here I have a real example. So this was the very first wave. So I put my Fibonacci on and started monitoring. I noticed this decline. Thank God it didn't came down here to the bottom. So it was a sufficient wave too. Okay, we are okay with the rule so far. And then a rebound started breaking the peak of wave one. So that was one possible entry point. And then I start checking and monitoring. I, I noticed that it managed to break the 161.8% of the, of the Fibonacci extension, okay? So that was a very uh, strong, aggressive third wave, which managed to reach up to 361% uh, extension, Fibonacci extension. So the a possible entry entry will have been the break of 
um, the break of peak of, of, of the peak of the wave one or all the rest of the Fibonacci extension that he managed it managed to break. So all these were possible entry levels. Then another rule, right? So we make sure that the wave two is not more than 85% of wave one. We have seen that wave three it has broken the top of the uh, wave one, but also it started expanding and expanding and expanding above 161. Okay, so traditionally, theoretically, the wave three, you don't need, by the way, guys, because I might confuse you, you don't need to wait for the wave three to reach 161% in order to enter. No, you can enter uh, once it breaks and it moves above the peak of the wave one. But what I'm trying to say over here, this second bullet point is that the length of the wave three might be as small as 161% of wave uh, of one, or the maximum it can get is up to 323% of wave one. So in this case, it reached more than that, it reached 360 of wave one. Okay, the smaller it can get, is up to 161. So we, we might have seen the end of wave three over here. So that's why I'm saying the buy in the entry level will be the break of wave one or even the break of 138% Fibonacci level as well. So yeah, the smaller, the wave three might be as small as 161% of wave one or uh, as big as up to 300, uh, 323%, okay? That's the biggest it can get. Now, you might have missed entering uh, in wave three, and you have now seen wave four. You have seen a pullback. You have seen that the wave three finished. We have seen a reversal make sure, actually not make sure, have in mind that wave four must never, never move below the peak of wave one, okay? Never. But also you can time and uh, also participate in uh, opening a cell position during the wave four. Why? Because again, we have timing. We can measure the length of the fourth wave because the fourth wave typically it, it could be from a from 14.6% up to 38%, but no more than 50% of wave three. So as soon as you can see a reversal of it, like this one, you can actually be aware, you can you actually know that the this correction will not move more than 50% of the of the wave three. So it will be good for you to add a new Fibonacci from the start of the wave three to the top of the wave three in in order to uh, time the wave four. What I mean by time to identify how far it will go, uh, how, how, what's the minimum level that can reach. So yes, wave four must never, never be, will never typically be more than 50% of wave three. Okay. So that's why you can open some smaller positions, um, intraday positions. Um, so on the one side to have positions based on the overall direction, which is up, but also opening some um, sell position uh, to trade the wave four or the wave two. Finally, wave five is typically between 61.8% and to the maximum 123% of wave one. And you might say, but what you are telling me, Andrea, wave one is done, is far away, it's way down, how it could be 61% or 123% of wave one. So what you will do, 
is taking your Fibonacci level, the one that you have put in wave in wave one, taking it as it is, and drag and drop it at the bottom of of wave of wave four. So like that. Let me show you. Let me demonstrate it to you. So let's put Euro Swiss, the same example that I have in my slides. Let's, and it was an example back in 2018 because it was a brilliant example. That's why I kept it. Let me get rid of all these lines. Sorry. So here we are. Here, this is the same exactly example that you are seeing in my slides, but I will do it live. So remember, we have added, we have added a, a, a Fibonacci from in the very first wave, right? Now you will take this and you will add it at the bottom of wave four, right? Oops, I put it vice versa. Sorry for that, guys. So it's like that. This is the correct way. So I will take it from wave one and I will put it on the bottom of wave four because I have seen, I have identified that the wave four is finished. How you identify, Andrea, that wave four is finished? Because we had reached to this bottom and then two consecutive doji candle and then a bullish one and another bullish one. So that was the end. I knew that it was the end of wave four and that the wave five already started. So I have put my Fibonacci level on and based on the rules that I have just shown you, I know in advance that wave five cannot be more than 123% of wave one, right? It will be from 60% up to 120, the maximum. So. I can enter, I can enter long with targets at 100% Fibonacci or even at 123%. Let me add 123. So 123.6%. So, sorry. Okay, okay. Oops, what have I done wrong? Have I not did it? Ah, sorry, my bad. So I have added this, okay. Okay, so with targets at 100 and 123%. So these were my targets as soon as I see, I saw that uh, the wave four has finished and I had this bullish candle, candle over here or if I saw the break of 50% or even the 61% of my Fibonacci, then I could enter long with targets at 100% and 123%. You can say, Andrea, but in this example, we can see that uh, it has reached 161. Yes, in this case, it managed to extend even more, but it's too risky to to just trade on the belief that it might extend higher. It's better to stick with the rules, to stick with poor probabilities, because according to the Elliott wave theory, the wave five typically is as big as 123.6%. Just to be on the safe side, stick with those rules. So 100 the a target at 100% and 123% are more than in good because the 123% is also the 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 uh, the the peak of wave three. So that these two were nice targeted levels. So um, 
Uh, what else? Yeah, so that's a, a, an inverse example. Is in the case we might see a downtrend, so the wave a valued wave analysis to be in a downtrend is the same exact principle. So, but in this wave, in this wave, if we are in a bearish market, we're gonna have three down waves and two corrective waves, right? So, wave number one. So over here, you you need to add your Fibonacci then measure wave two to make sure that we'll not get back to the top of wave one. And then you start measuring your wave three. And as soon as it breaks the bottom of wave one, you can enter in a short position, okay, with targets at the 161% of wave one, or up to 200% of wave one, and etc. Then, as soon as you spot that the wave three has reached to its end, you need to monitor wave four to make sure that it doesn't, uh, is not more than 50% of wave three, and then you can have some final positions on the uh, implementation on the development of wave five. So that was the very first uh, part of Elliott wave analysis, guys. The second part will be tomorrow, a bit more advanced. So I think that today's was pretty easy, Is it, wasn't it? Uh, by the way, Elliott wave is something that is extremely difficult to apply in, in short time frames, such as 15 minutes, 30 minutes chart. It's more of a long term um, uh, tool. It can be applied, of course, in the 30 minutes and one hour, uh, of course, but you have to be fast. That's why it's tricky. You have to be fast if you want to apply Elliott Wave or, or not, not to apply. If you have spotted Elliott Wave in smaller time frames, such as one hour or 30 minutes or 15 minutes, yes, you can see Elliott over there as well, but you need to be very fast. That's why I'm saying that it's a bit more tricky. Okay, so I can see that uh, it's understandable. It was okay so far. So yeah, the second part will be tomorrow. Uh, dear Nicole, don't worry if you missed it. You, since you have participated, you will receive the recording and the handout. Actually, have you downloaded the handout, guys? I have put it on, by the way. And dear Nicole, hopefully I will see you tomorrow in the second part. Uh, try to catch up with us. Try to see the recording today. And we're going to um, uh, talk to you again tomorrow, guys. Uh, we're going to see the second part, a bit more tricky one. Uh, thank you very much for attending. attending. Hope you're having a great day ahead. And I'll see you all tomorrow, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, feel free to ask anything you want, by the way. Uh, uh, webinar has called for us to come. Let me know if you need anything. I'm here for you. But anyway, it will be tomorrow as well. So I'm waiting for you. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.